Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, we're going to be doing a video on the right and left functions inside of Tableau. Okay, let's get stuck in. So we're here in Tableau. I'm just going to open up Superstore Sales. I'm going to open up the American version, which is the second version. And here we go. Now, the field I'm going to be using in order to show you this feature is actually the order ID field. If we just right click on it and then go down to describe, you actually get a description of this field, uh, which is essentially the metadata about this particular column inside of the database. In this case, that's Excel. If you scroll down, you'll see a list of basically the first 20 or so items. This is really, really cool. If you don't see this, you sometimes get this option to load the data. So that's a nice little tip there. If you want to see what's in a, in a particular column, just hit the load button and it will load it or it will show you the first 20 rows. Now I'm going to be using the right and left functions to essentially isolate certain bits of this text because that's essentially what this string function does. It lets you choose a certain number of characters from the right or the left and basically isolate them in, in a calculation. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to hit close. I'm just going to bring order ID onto rows here so we can see it nice and clearly. Tableau gives me a notification to tell me there's a lot of rows here. I just clicked right through it because I'm fine. I've got enough uh, resources on my computer to be looking at that. If you want to know how many rows exactly, it's over down here on the left hand side, 5009 marks. That's essentially how many rows we've got. So I'm going to open up the calculation window, create calculated field, and we're going to call this the right function just to start with. Uh, let's make this bigger by hitting command plus. Uh, just so that it's uh, big enough for you to see. And um, as ever, you can go over here to the right hand side, go to the string selection and just look for the function that says right. It's not right here in the list. So I'm just going to type in right and it will search it for me. And there we go. On the right hand side, it says returns a specified number of characters from the end of the given string. That's pretty cool. So let's double click on that and that will bring it into the field. Now the field we want to do this is on order ID. So I'm just going to go ahead and type that in there. So that's our first bit of the t uh, calculation, we need to have a piece of uh, string, a piece of string. We need to have a string inside of this data section. Okay. Then we have a comma after our string to basically tell Tableau that we're now moving on to declare the number of characters we want from the right hand side. And if I just move this to the right, I know that this data is very consistent. It's lovely and clean. Superstore always is. Uh, if we count this one, two, three, four, five, six, the last six characters are basically what we're interested in. So let me hit six and that's pretty much our function. Now it's going to go on a new line here. And this is a mistake sometimes people make. Um, I don't know what I'm doing here, but if I just hit double forward slash here, uh, sometimes people will do this. So they'll write the function like so, and uh, this should be in the capitals. Okay. So this is pretty much exactly the same as we just did. And then what they'll do is they'll look at this documentation and they'll use the double quote mark. So they'll do this. Um, and then they'll say, uh, just, let's just pretend that I actually um, automatically entered this order ID. Okay. So this is, this is what they'll do. And then they'll write the function like this and they'll write it like this because that's what the documentation here says. What's not clear is that Tableau is only putting those quotation marks in there because uh, that is a way of adding a string to this calculation. Let me just show you if I take this and put it up here, what will actually happen is it will treat this as a piece of text. Okay. So what I'll do is uh, I'll hit enter on this, put it on a new line and then comment it out. And then what we'll do is we'll get rid of these and then we'll switch it over to show you that it works properly. If you don't include them, I'm only showing this cause I see it all the time. People follow the instructions to the letter. Let's hit apply, drag right onto order ID. I did that without, you know, doing anything. And you can see it literally just took the uh, right six most items. So if we count backwards, we have one here with the letter D, two in the letter I, a space. I think I've got two spaces here. Uh, no, one space. And then uh, that's what, how many now? So let me just start again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So it returns everything after the letter D pretty much. Okay. And I think because of the way computers work, um, six actually means uh, it can't, starts counting from zero. And essentially I think what's actually going on here is that there is an additional character here that I'm not, Oh, of course I forgot this little, um, bracket. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's why we start with the E in there. 
I do sometimes get confused because when you count in computing terms, sometimes six means seven because you start counting from zero, one, two, three, but that's programming language. That's not Tableau. So there you go. You can see it's taking the right mod six and it's not working as we expected because the order ID field is actually a field. So in order to do that, we just need to just remove this because that's actually the string in itself. We don't need to put speech marks around it to make it a string. It already is a string. We know that by just going to the data type here, you can see it says ABC. That means it's a string. So now let's hit apply. And now you'll see that that's doing the right thing. So that's pretty much it for these functions. Right goes from the right hand side, left goes from the left hand side. Let's just switch things up. And let me just show you that very, very quickly. So if I just search for this field, we had right here, I'm going to right click and duplicate it. So I get another copy, then I'm going to rename it and uh, call it left. It's going to disappear because I've got the search going on right now. And it's only looking for things that start with right. So then let's go here, right click on it and edit. And it loads up the left. And we can just change this now. So we'll just hit uh, this one here and I'll just type in uh, left. Okay, just to make that simple, it auto completes. Uh, now you can see it's exactly the same function. Uh, hit apply and we're going to drag it in. And you'll see that it takes the left six items. So in this case, CA201 um, uh, is, is basically what it's going to pick up. I can actually change it to seven because that would give me the first part of the order ID um, and it keeps it in a nice consistent format. So this is great because this works when you know the field or the information is going to be consistent every single time. Um, however, most data isn't actually ever that clean. So this has a very limited use case. You can do something which is to dynamically find the position of something and then dynamically create this number over here and then use that to do the left function. So if you think of it this way, whatever you put in here can be anything. It can be a calculation. It can be uh, a parameter. In fact, if I just go ahead and do that, let's just create a parameter in this white space. We'll call it number of characters. Okay. And now that's ready to go. We're going to keep it as a float. Click OK. Right click on it. Show the parameter. It's going to come up here on the right hand side. Okay. Now I'm going to go back in my left calculation and I'm going to replace this. Let's just make this larger so you can see. I'm going to replace this with my parameter and the parameter is called number of characters. And you see it comes up here as a, a numerical um, field, but it actually says source parameters. So let's click on that and parameters end up being purple inside of the calculation window. So now I hit apply. You'll see that it just has one character, but I can now close this. And now in here on the right hand side, I can just simply type whatever I want. Let's say I hit eight, hit enter, boom, it goes and finds the eight characters, hit seven, boom. So parameters are basically user variable fields and um, you can enter whatever you want into them. They're not stored with the data source. They're stored in a separate table that sits inside of the workbook and it's loaded dynamically on, on, onto the data set when you need it. But it allows you to do really cool things like this, give users a way of changing the context of the question being asked and you can build them into your calculation to make things like this really, really dynamic. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. In the next video, we're going to be actually looking at the find function, specifically find and the find nth function. Um, and we're going to be combining it a bit with these functions as well. So be sure to look out for that video um, when I upload it very soon. All right, take care. If you've enjoyed the video, you know what to do. If you haven't, let me know in the comments below. A lot of you have been telling me uh, what kind of videos you want to see on Tableau Server. I actually have a new way of making sure that people can submit those and we can get a bit of a community involvement in terms of choosing which videos I actually record next. These functions are going to be a staple this year, but we're going to try and do new videos on a Friday that are basically community voted. So look out for the link to that in the description. Uh, I'm going to sort of create a bit of a challenge to find the link to do that because a lot of people spam the comments. So I'm going to make it a little bit hard for people to find. But if you look in the description, you'll know what to do. And uh, yeah, suggest some videos you'd like to see. I'll catch you in the next video.